Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we are talking about projected loads and we'll focus on an example using snow load. To illustrate snow loads, let's consider two buildings side by side, one with a flat roof and one with this sloped roof. Both buildings will have the same floor area as shown down here. And let's put some snow falling vertically down onto these buildings. Now we'll notice as I draw my snow load, both buildings will collect the same total amount of snow load despite the fact that this roof is sloped. And in fact, the slope will cause a little bit of snow to fall off. So in reality, that will collect slightly less snow load. But despite the fact that this slope roof has more surface area, it will, neglecting sliding, collect the same amount of load total. So how do we handle that as an engineer? The answer to that is that we will use projected loads and I'll illustrate it with this roof truss right here. We have a slope of five over 12. So this length is 13 feet and this length here is also 13 feet. For my loading, I'm going to have a 20 pounds per square foot dead load. And we'll assume that the self weight of the truss is negligible compared to that load. And I'll also have a 25 pounds per square foot snow load, but I'm going to consider this as a projected load. And we'll see how that's different from the dead load in just a little bit. Now for my load combination, if I want to consider LRFD or factor design, I'm going to consider 1.2 times dead plus 1.6 times snow in this case. And ultimately I want to find my axial shear and moment diagrams for a B. And I could, in theory, find it for BC as well, but because this truss is going to be symmetric, they'll actually have the same diagram. So we'll find it for just one of these. First, looking at the dead load, we have 1.2 is my factor times 20 pounds per square foot. And that's going to be multiplied by the width that this truss is carrying. So it's carrying a two foot width, so times two, to get me 48 pounds per foot. And that load is going to be applied vertically following my truss like this. And this has a magnitude of 48 pounds per foot. Now let's contrast that with the snow load. So if I take my snow load, I'll have a 1.6 factor. I have 25 pounds per square foot and it's the same two foot width. Calculating that out, this is 80 pounds per foot. However, the foot here is means a different thing. So it means a foot in the horizontal plane, not a foot along the length of this member here. So to illustrate that, I'm going to draw my horizontal plane right here. And then I'll put my projected load along that plane where this is 80 pounds per foot. So we'll notice the snow load is going to be projected over this horizontal plane whereas my dead load is going to be on the slope of my roof truss here. Now let's find the reaction forces. I'm going to have four reaction forces in this problem. I have a Y and a X and also at my other pin, I'll have C Y and C X. We'll start off with the sum of moments at a is equal to zero. And I'll consider my dead load first. We can see this dead load is going clockwise about point a. So we'll have a negative moment and it's 48 pounds per foot. And if I want the total load exerted by that, I'll consider these two together. We'll notice that it's applied over 13 plus 13 more feet. So the total load is 48 times 26 feet. Now the moment arm for those two loads in combination is still the horizontal distance to the center of your load, which is 12 feet. So now let's consider the snow load. I see for the snow load, I have a clockwise, so a negative moment. My load is 80 pounds per foot. But instead of being over applied over 26 feet here, it's applied only over the horizontal distance, which is 12 plus 12 or 24 feet. And the moment arm is identical to before, so that's still 12 feet. Lastly, I have my force in the Y direction at point C as a moment arm of 24 feet, and this is all equal to zero. So we can therefore use that to find CY is equal to 1584 pounds. Next, if I consider my sum of forces in the Y direction, we'll see that this thing is symmetric. So AY is also equal to 1584 pounds. To find my reactions in the X direction, I'm going to be considering my second free body diagram right over here of just side BC. 
Now at location B, I have revealed two internal forces right here, but we're not going to actually have to solve for them because instead I'm just going to take my sum of moments about B is equal to zero. Now listing out all the forces on that free body diagram, we'll see that we have an upward force of here, 1584 pounds, we already solved for that, and CX is my unknown. So considering that sum of moments, I have CX, the moment arm for that is five feet, and I have plus a moment from my other reaction force, which is 1584 pounds, multiplied by the moment arm of 12 feet. Next, I have to consider my distributed loads. So if I have my dead load, it's 48 pounds per foot, and I have 13 feet of it, and the moment arm is six feet to the centroid. And in addition, I have my snow load, which was 80 pounds per foot. And this is applied over 12 feet instead of 13 feet. Moment arm is still six feet to that. This is all equal to zero. And therefore I can solve for CX, which is a negative 1900.8 pounds. And lastly, I can return to my free body diagram for the total structure to find AX which is simply from my sum of forces in the x direction equal to zero, and ax is merely negative cx, so that's 1900.8 pounds. So therefore I found all my reaction forces, and now we can proceed with finding our internal force diagrams. Now for internal forces, we can see all the loads applied to section AB here, and they're all either vertical or horizontal. However, if I want to get an axial diagram or a shear diagram, I'm going to need to convert them into components that either follow my beam or are perpendicular to it. So my reaction components are going to be converted to an AN for the axial direction and an AV in the shear direction. And then I'm also going to have to convert this to distributed loads. And this one in the shear direction I'll call WV. And then I'll have a distributed load in the axial direction, which I'm going to call WN. Now, if we look at our angles here, this is a 5, 12, 13 triangle. So any vertical loads we can convert into two components in the V and N directions. In the V direction, this is 12 over 13, and this is 5 over 13 for the trigonometric ratios there. And if I look at a load in the horizontal direction, we can resolve this as a shear and axial component. In this case, the axial component is 12 over 13, and the shear component is going to be 5 over 13. So let's break this down. I'll do the snow load first. We have SV, that will be my snow load component in the shear direction, and I have 80 pounds per foot. And the total load for that is 80 pounds per foot times 12 foot, because again, it's projected over that horizontal surface. Because I want the shear component, it's a vertical load, therefore I need to use 12 thirteenths. That's this side of my triangle right here. And then I'm going to distribute that load over the total width of 13 feet. So taking all that together, this is 68.16 pounds per foot. Next, let's consider the axial component of my snow load. So this is 80 pounds per foot, and it's applied over a distance of 12 feet. Because I'm looking at that axial component, it's going to be multiplied by five over 13 and then it will be distributed over a 13 foot distance. So this value is going to be 28.40 pounds per foot. Next, if I consider my dead load, we'll have dead load in the shear direction first. I have 48 pounds per foot. If I want my total dead load, it's that multiplied by 13 feet because the dead load is applied over the total length of 13. For the shear component is 12 over 13 and then I'm going to divide it by 13 feet. So obviously we can see that our 13 feet cancels. So taking that all together, we have 44.31 pounds per foot. And then dn in the axial direction is the same 48 pounds per foot. I know once again, I'm going to multiply and divide this by 13 feet because it's applied over 13 and I'm going to redistribute it over 13, so there's no conversion there. So I'll leave that off and I'll just multiply this by five over 13 to get the axial component. And we'll see that this is 18.46 pounds per foot. 
Combining all that together, I can see that my total shear contribution from these two loads is going to be 112.47 pounds per foot. And likewise, if I look at my axial contribution here, that is going to be 46.86 pounds per foot. Now, if I look at my reaction forces, we'll look at AV in the shear direction first. I'll notice that my horizontal load will resolve as a negative force, whereas my vertical load will resolve as a positive force. So keeping those signs in mind, I have a horizontal load of 1900.8 pounds. That component is going to be 5 thirteenths, and it's down in this case. So I'll have a negative 5 over 13. And then looking at my vertical load, it's plus a load of 1584 pounds. The load is vertical and I want this component here. So that's 12 thirteenths and it's positive in this case. So I'll multiply by a positive 12 thirteenths. And this force is there for 731.1 pounds. Next, I'll look at AN in the axial direction. I'll notice both of these are acting in the positive direction for AN, so I'll just add the two components together directly. So I have 1900.8 pounds. That axial component is 12 over 13. Plus I have my second load of 1584 pounds, and that component is 5 over 13. And therefore my total reaction there in the axial direction is 2363.8 pounds. So now let's take my computed values and we'll calculate the axial shear and moment diagrams. Let's begin with our axial diagram. I see I have a concentrated load here at point A and then a distributed load from A to B. We'll start the diagram at zero and I can see the concentrated load is going in the positive direction, but the axial diagram always switches your sign. So that means we'll start at a negative 2363.8 pounds. And because my distributed load is going in the negative direction, we will have a positive slope of 46.86 pounds per foot. So going from A to B, that will take us up to here where we're going to end at 1754.6 pounds. That entire beam is in compression, so I'll put that as a C just to remind me. And now we'll move to shear. Our shear diagram always moves in the same direction as our load, and we can see we start off with a concentrated load of 731.1 pounds up. So we'll start up here, 731.1 pounds. And then I have a negative slope of 112.47 pounds per foot. It's going to take me all the way down to here to a negative 731.1 pounds. Now, if I check the area of this triangle, it's one half times base. The base is 6.5 feet times height, which is 731.1 pounds. And therefore this area is 2376 pound feet. And we'll get the identical area in the second triangle, except that it's negative. Lastly, we have the moment diagram. There are no concentrated moments applied from A to B, so we'll start at zero. And we have a positive area here and a negative area that's equivalent. So we'll have a parabola that goes from zero and back to zero, where the peak is 2376 pound feet. Now this moment puts the top here in compression, the bottom in tension. Now at this point, we could calculate the axial shear and moment diagrams for BC, but because this problem is symmetric, we know that those diagrams will look the same as what we have right here. And so that concludes our example. So thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. Please subscribe and I will see you next time.